Welcome to the news. I am your host, Box. On today's headlines, even though farming techniques and technology are much more advanced, farmers are still plagued with forces beyond their control, the weather. Now, we head on to Bonnie, which is on scene in Disneyland, where Farmer Joe can't believe all his hard work has been in vain. Thank you, Box. Right here, we see this poor Joe trying to salvage a situation that has gone catastrophically wrong. Sadly, however, dead crops are not worth much, and this has taken a toll on him. I hear you out, Joe. I'm Sylvester from Weather & Co, and I'm here to help you out. I may not be able to give you control of the weather, but I'm able to give you the next best thing, which is weather instruments. With weather instruments, you are able to profile your area's weather patterns and make accurate predictions of what weather is going to come. And with that, situations like this will never happen again. Remember those times when you were hungry? We'll say bye-bye to those times and hello to Food of Plenty. Hello guys, I am Professor D and today we'll be showcasing to you a few instruments we have in our lab. Alright guys, so here we have a minimum and maximum thermometer and this is used to measure the minimum and maximum temperature of a day. So the next equipment on our list is this sling psychometer. This sling, this sling psychometer is used to measure relative humidity of any day. Alright, so the next thing we have is a wind vane. This wind vane is used to measure the direction of the wind. As you can see, there is north, south, east and west on this wind vane. Alright, so the next thing we have is a wind anemometer. And this is used to measure wind speed. Alright, so the last thing we have on our list today is a rain gauge. And this rain gauge is used to measure the amount of precipitation that has occurred over a given period of time. Hello guys, Professor D here. And I, today I'm going to show you how to use the minimum and maximum thermometer. First of all, to using this, you have to place it 1.5 meters above the ground, as so. The next thing you must ensure is that it's not in contact with direct sunlight. Okay, so after you're collecting your data, you might wonder how do you reset this? Well, basically it's very simple. You see this button over here? Just press it once and the whole thing is reset. And that, sir, is how you use a minimum and maximum thermometer. Alright guys, we're back and it has been a day already and let's see our maximum and minimum temperature read. So first of all, how to read this? Well, you take the bottom of the metal index and you look at, note at the temperature. This is for the minimum temperature and this is the maximum temperature. We take a look at the minimum, the lowest point of the metal index and then you're done for the day. That's your minimum and maximum temperature for the day. However, these readings might not be so accurate as during the day, you know, maybe some kind of animal walk past and this like this for example emits heat this might interfere with our maximum and minimum temperature reading making our data inaccurate all right guys here we have the sling psychrometer so how do we equip this basically or how what is this equipment made out of there's a dry bulb here the red one and the wet bulb this is essentially measuring relative humidity so first of all we need to make the wet bulb wet and we do this by taking water and pouring it in this hole by doing this, we will then make sure that this wet bulb is wet. So after that, we have to spin this thing away from our body at a constant speed for one minute. Alright, one minute's over. And now we have to check the temperature on the dry bulb and the wet bulb. And now we take note of these two temperatures and repeat the experiment again for one minute. All right, the next minute's over and we look at, take a look at the readings again. If the readings are the same, you are done for the day and you can jot down your results. However, if the readings are different, you have to repeat your experiment again, like by doing it for another one minute until your readings are the same. All right, now for the limitations. Well, this equipment relies on the wet bulb evaporate, the water in the wet bulb evaporating. And when your body emits heat, like over here, this might affect the evaporation rate and thus affect our results. All right, guys, next thing we have is the wind vane. And this wind vane will tell you where the wind is blowing. So first, in order to correct, ensure the correct direction, we must align this north, south, east, west with the north, south, east, west of our compass. 
All right, so I think North is over there from our compass. So let's align it right there. All right, perfect. So once you got this, we must hold it above our head and let the wind do its job. All right, in this case, you can see that the arrow is pointing over there. And this will mean that, that the wind is coming from that direction, which is currently the southwest. All right, guys, this wind vane also has limitations. Like if you say you're in an area that has buildings like that, or buildings like that, these buildings might interfere with the wind movement as they can block the wind and thus resulting in inaccurate wind vane measurements. All right, guys, here we have the wind anemometer and this is used to measure wind speed. So how it comes? It comes in two pieces and we have to put the two pieces together like this. All right, once it's in, you must ensure it's working properly by blowing it. See, working perfectly fine. You should be able to rid of the scale right here. All right, so what we do now, basically, well, we have to, we have to put this above our head so as not to ensure that any wind is being blown our body. And we look at the wind. All right, guys, and then when you when the wind comes, you just read off the scale, and right now, it's currently zero. So what are the limitations of the wind anemometer? Well, basically, it's the same as the wind vane. Like all the buildings around us, these buildings can possibly block off wind. And once they block off wind, they will reduce the wind speed, which in the end will, will affect the accuracy of our readings. All right, guys, so this is the rain gauge and how do you set it up? First, we put it in an area that is uh, free of any buildings and people walking by, so nothing will interfere with the rainfall. And now we have to put in this speaker inside. This will stabilize the thing, so even when rain falls, it won't fall down. So next thing in this is this collecting machine here. This collecting top will collect all the rainfall and channel it into this beaker right here. And that is how we measure how to set up the rain gauge. Basically, what limitations does this have? Well, rain is actually localized and it doesn't really... You might measure an area, the amount of rainfall over here might differ from here and from over there. So basically, it's very different. So basically, it's very hard to calculate the amount of rainfall in one area. Alright, so basically, how do we calculate... Uh, how, how can we derive anything from the temperature, uh, the thermometer? So basically, how do we calculate uh, our daily temperature, also known as the diurnal temperature? Basically, you take the maximum temperature of the day minus by the uh, minimum temperature of the day. So from our results uh, of our thermometer, thermometer we left outside, our maximum temperature was 35 and our minimum was 25. So basically, this means our diagonal temperature range is 10 degrees Celsius. Alright, so now we have to calculate the mean daily temperature. Okay, so let's say, uh, how do we get one uh, our, one of our hourly temperatures, basically you take the reading of uh, the thermometer in one hour let's say it's 25 and 35 our hourly temperature reading will be these two and if you get it over 2, which means it is 30 so basically we have to get 40, uh, 24 of these readings at the model and divide them by 24 and we'll get our average, uh, our mean daily temperature which in our case is 28 degrees Alright guys, these are our results from our sling psychometer. The dry bulb had a uh, temperature reading of 30 and the wet bulb had a temperature reading of 25. So basically from this we can calculate relative humidity. There's this table of uh, relative humidity. And then uh, on the left side there will be the, dry, the temperature of the dry bulb. And then on the top side will be the depression of the wet bulb. The depression is just a change in temperature. So basically, the change in temperature of this is 5. So basically, what we can see by the, uh, the table itself, we mismatch, we, I mean, we cross match the points and we get a relative humidity of 67%. Oh wow, thanks man. With all this new knowledge, I feel like the greatest farmer ever. Those are the words I wanted to hear, Joe. I'm just happy to help a fellow man in need. Go ahead, spread the word. Together, we can change agriculture for the better. Well, there you have it, folks. Another farmer's life made better by weather and cold. Back to you in the studio, Bob.
Thanks for the story, Boni. We certainly do appreciate all the work the non-governmental organisation has done and hope they will continue with it. Providing farmers with the basic knowledge to sustain themselves. It's priceless. Thank you for watching the news.